It was Agatha all along. Bing, 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 bing. Who's been messing with everything? It was Bodie Boy all along. This is my puppy Bodie. He's a cutie. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Comically Boston, episode 182. And this was a big week for nerdy news. And let's get right into it. Sonic 3 dropped a trailer in a poster revealing that Keanu Reeves will be voicing Shadow, my favorite character in the Sonic universe, closely uh, edging out uh, Knuckles, Idris Elba's character. Sorry if you hear that sniffing, that's still my Bodhi boy, he's underneath me. But this poster here for Shadow 3 is awesome. Or Shadow 3, for Sonic 3 is awesome. I really love this going through the building here and you can see like one's fire, one's like blue electricity or red electricity instead of fire. But Shadow's design is just so cool. He's always looked so badass. I love the way his, his eyes look in this red, black and red. Ugh. And Shadow in this trailer kind of really kicks butt. You know, he kicks Ed, Idris Elba and Knuckles' ass pretty quick. Um, and then we also get to see that Sonic's going to have to work with uh, Dr. Robotnik, I believe is his name. Uh, Jim Carrey's character. He's returning again for the third movie. Um, and this time he also is going to be playing his father, you know, so he's playing the, a fatter, older version of the character he's been playing for three movies, and then also playing his father, so Jim Carrey is going to be pretty in, unhinged in this film, and it's going to be really good. But I have a short little clip, clip here, a little six seconds of what uh, Keanu Reeves' voice sounds like as Shadow, and I think, you know, it sounds like Keanu, but it fits quite well. You're a colorful bunch. We when we're done. There won't be anything left. Hey, don't you Ooh, I kind of really like that. Shadow's riding a motorcycle. Um, he's like, you're a colorful bunch, which is very true. We have blue, yellow, red between Tails, Sonic, and uh, Knuckles. <laughs> Moving on, comment below your thoughts on Sonic 3. Will you be seeing it? Have you seen the first two Sonics? But the next topic today is Joker 2. Falia Edu, they dropped a couple new posters. We got the Joaquin Phoenix poster. This movie's coming October 2nd, so it's honestly right around the corner. Can't wait for that. Uh, Lady Gaga has her own poster here. And then there's a uh, textless poster of just the two of them back to back. She's smoking a cigarette. Um, Joaquin Phoenix's face paint looks really good in this picture here. I don't know if it's the color or just the blue on his eye. I don't know. It just looks really sharp and hers looks like smudged. I don't know. But you know there's going to be some type of musical element. You don't get a Lady Gaga if you're not going to have her singing and whatnot. In, in the first movie he was like a stand-up comic and in the trailer you see him like singing and at a piano playing music and out with a spotlight. So I wonder if he's like pivoting a little bit and he goes, people didn't like my jokes, but I have a beautiful singing voice. <laughs> I, I'm curious, but I guess we'll find out in October. Also, right around the corner, a movie from John Watts, the uh, director of the Spider-Man trilogy, Tom Holland's Spider-Man trilogy, the No Way Home trilogy, the Home trilogy, if you would. Um, but Brad Pitt and Clooney star as wolves, and I believe they're two assassins or cleaners or like hitmen, that type of thing, that both get hired to do the same job and they end up together. Uh, this will be an Apple TV film and it comes out on a streaming on Apple TV Plus September 27th. And I believe it might be in theaters for like a week before this. I, I'm, I would be curious to see it in theaters, but you know, maybe along the lines of uh, The Instigator or something like that. Uh, but I think this Wolves movie is going to be really good, so I'm in. Uh, another movie with a new poster out that I think is going to be phenomenal. Every trailer that I keep seeing for it at the theaters really is starting to win me over. And Timothy Chalamet is playing Bob Dylan in uh, James Mangold's new film, A Complete Unknown, a Bob Dylan biopic, if you would. Monica Barbaro, uh, Ella Fanning, and Edward Norton's also going to be starring in that film with him alongside Timothy Chalamet. And... Yeah, he, he really it looks like Bob, he sounds like Bob. You still hear a little bit of Chalamet in his voice, but like, he do, he's doing quite a good job, you know, being Bob Dylan. And once this film comes out, uh, 
I believe it comes out Christmas too, so it looks like Bob Dylan or Craven the Hunter you'll be able to go see for Christmas. What the hell? <laughs> a new movie announcement. We finally know the title of Gareth Edwards' new Jurassic Park movie. This will be called Jurassic World Rebirth. So not a reboot, not a necessarily continuation of Jurassic World. Uh, it, I believe they said it's going to be a standalone thing, but they do still have Jurassic World in the title. I don't know why, but Jurassic World Rebirth is going to be the next one. It's going to be starring Jonathan Bailey and Scarlett Johansson. Uh, here's the first image we saw of the two of them. They look good together, and I mean, I love Scar jo, so I'll be there for her. And apparently Mahersha Ali is also in this, and he's holding the iconic flair, and he's got a very scared face on, so maybe he's coming face to face with old Rexy there, I don't know. But this will now be the seventh Jurassic Park movie, uh, the original trilogy, the Jurassic World trilogy, and now Gareth Edwards' possible trilogy, or maybe just a solo one film, I don't know, but... Um, I didn't necessarily love the Jurassic World movies. Jurassic Park is the first one is still by far the best one. Uh, I did like The Lost World, but not quite as much as I wanted to. Jurassic World's not bad. Um, Fallen Kingdom has some decent moments in it, but the overall movies aren't that great between Dominion and Fallen Kingdom. I'm here for some Rexy, you know what I mean? Just like everyone else. <laughs> they has been a new Star Wars game that came out recently too, the Star Wars Outlaws game. I've been playing that and the discourse online has been really funny for that one. Uh, some people are like, oh, it's it's a female-led game. It, they went woke, they go broke, fuck them. Disney Star Wars. And I'm like, listen, I, I've played the game. It's badass and it's awesome to play as k Vess and uh, her little buddy Nyx. Nyx has really won me over. Just running around with this like alien dog that like can help you do things. Awesome. You can probably still hear my dog yawning underneath the table. You should go boy. <laughs> uh, there's also a season pass. Like, I, I've, I've only gotten maybe two, three hours, maybe four hours into Star Wars Outlaws and I've been thoroughly impressed. A little too much uh, sneaking around. But I found when I went loud and proud, I actually preferred sneaking around. So, you know, you have the option though, which is kind of cool. You have options to go different routes. So it's really kind of open to how you want to play uh, is how you can do it. And it, I really love that aspect of it. I love that you can go to different planets. You can fly in the, the ship. You can go to land. You get you have a speeder. Nyx, you know, attacks or steals things from people, triggers, uh, you know, buttons. The, the puzzles have been really cool. They have a new image here for the season pass of Star Wars Outlaws. I don't know what that means. Maybe they're going to be adding missions, bounty hunting type stuff. That would be kind of cool. Um, but Lando Calrissian is going to be in the game. I have yet to bump into him. And also Hondo. Hondo Udanta, I believe is his name. Uh, or that might be Yandu Udanta from Marvel. But Hondo from... Uh, Star Wars. He has uh, been in the animated shows. He's like a smuggler. He's like a pirate, that type of thing. Um, I believe he's also supposed to be in the Skeleton Crew coming up pretty soon, but Hondo here is supposed to be in Star Wars Outlaws, and I have yet to see him, but I'm very, very curious to see where the rest of the game leads me. But coming into the last topic of today, uh, Agatha All Along has released a new poster from the twisted minds that brought you WandaVision. Revenge is a witch. Ooh, revenge is a bitch. Um, but the cast is, is stacked. Catherine Hahn, I, this is gonna be all of the spooky vibes you could possibly want. All of the Halloween trajectory, trajectory, everything. I have my Agatha shirt on. Love this little blood moon with some witches flying through it. Just a badass shirt. But then it's for Agatha, so I love it even more. Um, but September 18th that comes out and Marvel keeps releasing this image and another image here of Catherine Hahn and I, I just really can't understand why she's going to be naked and outside um, how this happens to poor Agatha but she seemed perfectly fine and comfortable. <laughs> also we learned that the episode lengths for the four, first four episodes uh, from Scarlet Witch updates which 
it has all of your wand updates that you could ever need. Uh, episode 1 will be 39 minutes and 49 seconds. Episode 2 will be 41 minutes, 25 seconds. Episode 3 shall be 37 minutes. Episode 4, 40 minutes and 52 seconds. Almost 41 minutes. But how many episodes total? I believe maybe 8 uh, or 9, maybe what like uh, WandaVision. I hope it's not any less than 6, and I, I know it's got to be more than 4. Um, but either way, I'm going to be here for that one. That show feels like it's going to be awesome and fun and different, but also kind of have capture that Halloween vibe. So I'm really here for it. And the last two pieces of news are big ones. Uh, if you're still trying to avoid Deadpool and Wolverine spoilers, get out of here. Um, but there was supposed to be this, I don't know if it's a deleted scene or what, but uh, Ryan Reynolds posted it, so now he's making this pretty much canon that Gambit, at the end of Deadpool and Wolverine, you know, the question of what happened to Gambit, is he still in the void, whatnot? I believe this confirms that Gambit is alive. Yeah, see that's, you know, it's a quick little clip and you hear some music and he's walking through the scattered bodies in the void in that compound, in Cassandra Nova's compound, and he turns around and just sees a sparkle portal. So where is that sparkle portal lead? Is that wet Deadpool coming to get him? Is that B-15 bringing him to the TVA? Either way, it feels like Gambit there is alive and he made it out of the void, which is awesome. Um, and then this last piece of news might be huge spoilers here for the Fantastic Four, but I will tell you what this actually is. Uh, ben Grimm, recently there was a picture of a man in a giant suit in rock gloves and there looks like they're putting on a rock mask for Ben Grimm the Thing. Now, we were told that they were doing uh, CGI and doing much more like the Mark Ruffalo way of doing things, the Korg way of doing things for the thing, uh, for Eben Moss Backrack. I, now, I don't think this is Eben in the suit. What I think they're doing here is getting proper lighting and, uh, scale for what the thing shall look like. And unless they're going full practical, if, if this is the finished look for the thing, I wouldn't love it, but it also looks much more like the the Kirby drawings from the Marvel comics from when the thing was created. Uh, much better than the other two things, honestly. And uh, if they're going to go the practical effects way, it, I think it does look kind of better than uh, Michael Chiklis's full practical suit. That poor man had to get in that every day. Um, but Eben, I believe, is going to be doing mostly mocap and performance capture. And this, I believe, will just be like, you guys have ever seen that chrome ball that they bring out on sets for uh, visual effects, for lighting and stuff like that? I believe they're doing something similar to that, but just with a stand-in Ben Grimm to get proper lighting on the rock, proper lighting on how the suit looks, the blue and the white Fantastic Four suit. I mean, it looks old and classic, but it also is supposed to be set in the 60s. I'm here for it, honestly. I think it's cool, and I think this movie is going to be awesome. I just heard recently Michael Giacchino's doing the score for Fantastic Four, and it sounds awesome. You know, like in every score I've ever heard from Michael Giacchino has been phenomenal. E even when he directed Werewolf by Night, I was so into that. Between the music and just like the, the way that he did things and the, how the music was incorporated with everything throughout. Oh, so beautiful. So, so well done. So shout out Michael Giacchino. I can't wait to hear your score for next year. But with that Jurassic World coming out in July of 2025, next July is packed between Superman, James Gunn's Superman, Jurassic World Rebirth, Fantastic Four, and I believe there might be also another one coming out next July. So July of 2025 will be a big month for movies. I hope to see all of these. I want to see all of these. But man, is it going to struggle and maybe not reflect the box office and how it should because people are going to want to see 
one or two of these movies but I don't know if everyone will have the budget and the money or the time to go to the movies three times in one month you know not everyone's like me you know and I watch a lot of movies and even I don't go to three movies in one month you know what I mean like but there's some A-list members that are going to three movies a week so I don't know power to those people but Maybe uh, by next July I'll be an A-list member instead of just a premiere member. <laughs> but comment below which of those movies you're going to go see next July. Are you excited for Agatha all along? Have you been playing any video games like a uh, Black Myth Wukong or a Star Wars Outlaws? I'd love to hear your thoughts on those down below. Uh, this new title for the Jurassic World movie, what do you think? Uh, I really liked what Eric Voss had to say it over on the break room the other day. He said, I would have really liked if this movie was just called Jurassic Rebirth. But they had to throw the Jurassic World in there to make sure people knew and understood that this is a Jurassic World movie. You know, like this is that same big IP that made a billion dollars a couple years ago. And all of those movies technically made a lot of money in the box offices, even though a lot of critics and fans didn't love the the second two Jurassic World movies. Didn't even really love Jurassic World though that much. You know, I think they're entertaining films though, regardless. Also coming up up in October here, we have Joker 2, and then we got Sonic 3 around the corner. So I would love to hear your thoughts on all these things in the comment section below. My name is Big Cam. I hope you guys enjoyed this and appreciate these videos and Comically Boston's every Monday. Stay tuned. We'll be do doing episode breakdowns for Agatha all along in The Penguin coming up in September. It's September 2nd already. Who knew? Time keeps flying by. But so glad to be here every week with you guys. Stay tuned for some more weekly nerdy news coming your way. Movie reviews coming out this week. I just watched a bunch of new stuff over the weekend. Uh, Kinds of Kindness, Trap with, from M. Night Shyamalan, and uh, some few other ones. But movie reviews coming to the channel soon. Stay tuned for that, and I will see you beautiful people in the next video. Peace.